So for the introduction of our base, our base scripture is going to come out of Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 8 through 13, yeah, 10 through 18. Hmm? Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Somebody got it?
you know, cast stuff out and they got their tails whipped right in the middle of the surface. Mm -hmm. Wow. But when Pastor finished calling it out, because he has spent time fasting and praying, he has spent time in the world, so he was already spiritually built up, and that's why uh, I'm so heavy right now on us becoming the people of prayer. Mm -hmm. Because that's the only way we want to really be spiritually built up to the place where we can handle such things and handle such attacks. So in the process, when Pastor got done calling it out, literally, the person dropped to the floor and slid like a snake right off the door. Mm -hmm. My Lord. I ain't never seen nothing like that in my life. But one thing it showed me, don't try it if you ain't ready. <laughs> That's right, right, right. That's right. And so we have to be careful, we have to be wise, and we have to be honest about what we can do and where we are in God. Don't get caught up in how long you've been saved, letting that make you think you have a certain level of seniority, or letting that make you think you're a certain place in God just because you've been in church 20, 30 years. I know a whole lot of grown babies. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So, so again, for our introduction, Ephesians is going to be our base scripture because, again, we have to put on the whole armor of God consistently in order to handle and deal with this step. Okay? Again, this study is going to stretch you and it's going to cause you to see things even in yourself that, you know, you're going to have to start praying about because you're going to realize you really ain't as saved as you think you are. All right? Okay. Now, so the introduction starts off by saying, as a child of God, we must understand that our Heavenly Father is what? Good. Good. His chief motivation is our life, in our life, excuse me, is to make us the best person we can possibly be. Everything he does, so yeah, everything he does as he deals with us in our Christian life is to develop our potential to the greatest degree possible. You need to make this note. You are not done yet. So make that note. I am not done yet. I don't care how many gifts you have right now. You're not done yet. God is still developing you. He wants to develop you. But development is a process. Y'all remember back in the day when we used to have those Polaroid cameras? Mm -hmm. And you know, you take a picture, but you had to wait mm -hmm. for it to develop before you can see if it came out right. Mm -hmm. Because if it didn't come out right, you was mad, you had to take another one. Mm -hmm. right. And you know, you only had at least eight bugs in there, so you know, you really you didn't have time to waste. Right. And that's the same way it is with your development. But you know, back in the day, we used to have to try to fan it to get it to develop a little bit quicker. Some stuff you can't fan. Some stuff you can't rush. And the process of God's development in your life cannot be rushed. Now here's what's key. Your development ain't my development. So that means I have to stop measuring my growth based on what God has done for me. I know you're wonderful, but you're not my measuring stick. All right? And so that's something that we really have to hone in on, is that uh, you ain't my measuring stick. I love you. I appreciate your gifts. But my process of development is based on where God has taken me. It's based on what God is doing in me. And it's based on what God has called me to do. So stop trying to tell people how, how they need to develop. You don't know how God is dealing with them. That's right. That's right. That's right. And that's kind of what we kind of mess up in church. Is, you know, we get a little spiritual perception. We get a little quickening. And next thing you know, we know what God's doing with everybody. Yeah. 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 Oh, I see you going to be... No, yeah. You ain't seen nothing. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Back up off me, leave me alone. Right. Quit calling everybody to preach. Everybody ain't no preacher. Come on. 
If your child may just be the sweep the flow, then you know what? Be the best little sweeper there is. Sweep the flow so well that can't nobody come behind you and improve on it. Come on. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? That's Touch your neighbor's I got my own process. I got my own process. All right. It says, on the other hand, Satan is totally evil. Jesus gives uh, a Satan's job description in John 10 and 10. Somebody turn to John 10 and 10. I love this scripture because I love to ask people what this scripture really means. Somebody got it? John 10 and 10. The thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have one and that they might have more abundantly. Who's coming? The thief, the thief, the thief. The thief is coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Who's the thief? Where do you see that? Where do you see that? Don't worry, I'll wait. No way. No way. Huh? Okay. Jesus gives us I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about where does it say that in the Bible? Oh. That that's it. Here's the thing. Can I help you? Yes, please. Can, can, can I stretch you a little bit and mess up your theology? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Oh. He ain't talking about the devil. Who are you talking about? I'm talking about hirelings. Read up. Yeah. Hirelings. Yeah. So you have to read up. Hirelings are people who only do what they do because they're getting paid to do it. That's right. They have no love for the sheep, they don't care about the sheep. So that's why he says when the thief comes, the hirelings high telling and book it, they're not going to stay around and protect the sheep. Remember, watch this. Anytime Satan is mentioned in the Bible, he's always mentioned by name. Your adversary, the devil. Behold, Satan desires. He's always mentioned by name. Okay, this is, uh, for lack of a better term, this is a common uh, idea that many believers have that Satan is the thief. He's not the thief, but the thieves are in operation because of him. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Did y'all understand that? I'm gonna explain that some more. Y'all okay? All right, I don't know if be lost. Yes, sir. No, I said I'm good. Okay, all right. So, again, when you start quoting that scripture, make sure you understand who you're talking about. Although the actions, though, uh, are the same. But yeah, he's coming to steal, he's coming to kill, he's coming to destroy, the thief is coming to scatter the sheep, the thief is coming to wreak havoc in your life. But the reason the thief is coming is because we have a lot of hirelings in the temple who only care about what they can get, who only care about what's going to benefit them, and as soon as they get their stuff, they gone. So in other words, we got to be careful of people that's always coming around trying to see what they can get, but you don't never see them looking out for nobody. People that's always hanging around talking about, well, you know, I'll do it, but how much you don't pay? Mm -hmm. I love the Lord, and you know, I, I, I'm going to give, I'm going to help the ministry, but you know, here's my invoice. <laughs> All the time. I mean, some of the time I understand, you know, business is business. That's right. But, I mean, you can't never sow any of your talents into the church. You can't never sow any of your giftings into the church. And then the scripture you want to use to work when it's worthy of his hire. And that's true. But sometimes it's okay to sacrifice because if you sacrifice for God's benefit, then God's going to open up the door and he's going to give you some stuff that your that, that, that my pain in you wasn't even going to measure up to. You understand what I'm saying? So again, just I want you to be mindful. That's not really what that scripture was talking about. We're not talking about necessarily the devil. This is the only place where I disagree with the writer. Okay? That's the only place where I disagree with the writer. 
the attributes of God. God is spirit, he's holy, eternal, infinite, omnipresent, omnipotent, true, just, righteous, life, unchangeable, sovereign. Do we need to actually, you know, go through it? Which one of these mean or we, you know, do we got it? Okay. Uh, he is love, faithful, merciful, prominent. Since God's attributes, y'all ready? Okay. God's attributes never get out of balance with each other. He never acts out of care. Take this note. This is the example of how we are to be. We are to act like who our Father is. So whose attributes and character do you show? If God is our Father, and we've just seen a list of His attributes, are those your attributes? Not all the time. You understand what I'm saying? Because truth is, uh, depending on who your mom and your daddy is, if people see you, and if they know who your mom and your daddy is, they start coming and stuff like, I know your mama raised you better than that. If your daddy heard you saying that, you know he ain't going to go for that. They'll call you into question and they'll check you real quick because of who they know your parents are. Here's the problem. People know they're Christian. They know you go to church every week. And then as soon as they call you out because your character don't line up with who you say you are, right. you get mad. Yeah. Oh, y'all gonna get mad? Yeah. Oh. Because I haven't seen it happen in church. And the thing is, when nobody trying to call you out, <laughs> they was just telling you, hey man, that, 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 that ain't God. You know, you, you really shouldn't say that, but you know, we you know we be wrong. We did. I'm gonna give them a piece of my mind. No, you can't afford to give people a piece of your mind. <laughs> You said that's all you got. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so we have to be careful, but we have to remember what we display tells people who we really are. It, it, it lets them know who we really are, and based on that, determines how they're going to deal with us. Truth is, how you act determines how people see God. Yeah. Whether they're going to love them, whether they're going to trust them, determines on how you're going to act and what attributes and what stuff you display. Now, the only thing that uh, God does that I love is he, he, he likes to give us time to get it right. Yes. Yes. Unlike your mom and daddy did when you, you know, was younger, because where, wherever you, you know, messed up at, that's probably where you got it. You know, not unlike me, I'm going to tell you all not, I have never been whooped a day in my life. Oh. I know, I know, I know. Am I lying? Am I lying? See, see, I had to have my grandmother prove it to her. Am I lying? Never been whooped a day in my life. You know why? Because I had enough sense to know I didn't want them problems. Because I seen what happened to folk that got whooped. I didn't want them problems. Here it is, though, as believers, we see what happens to people that get whooped and we still want them problems. <laughs> because our attributes don't line up with God the Father. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Now, I'm not saying that you have to wake up every morning and be perfect, but you have to wake up every morning striving. I am saying that you don't always hit the mark, but you have to get up every day trying. 
don't just get up like, oh, well, well, what was me, and then whatever comes, what comes and all. That cannot be our attitude. As people of God, we cannot walk around with a haphazard attitude when it comes to how we live our life and what we present and show the world concerning Jesus Christ, who hung, led, and died, and now we're trying to get them to come into the same fellowship that we're in. Why, why, would, why would I want to come and hang out with you and every time I see you, you fuss in the cuss? Right. You all on the job. Everybody know you on the job as a hellraiser. <laughs> and then you talk about some come go to church and me. I ain't going to your church. <laughs> Why? Because what you represent don't line up with the attributes that everybody know about God. Right. So really the reason some people ain't getting saved or ain't coming to church ain't got nothing to do with the devil. Okay. Okay. I want y'all to be mad at me when I first Bible study. It says, for this reason, we can trust and have confidence in God's judgment concerning our lives. I highlighted this portion right here. This will always, I'm sorry, he will always do what is best for us. His love for us is beyond understanding it is so great and absolutely trustworthy. So understand this. Take this note. What is best is not always what is comfortable. Mm. What is best is not always what's comfortable. Understand, God knowing what's best for you will cause you to be stretched beyond measure. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. You said what is best is always. It's not always comfortable. It's not always comfortable. It's not always comfortable. Mm -hmm. The writer says that God always knows and does what's best for us, and that's true. We're going to have to get some more copies. We got to. That's what you're looking for. Yeah, we're out. We're going to get you. we we get you. Good to see you. I'm glad you're here. Okay. Um, but understand that although it's best for you, it's not always comfortable for you. <coughs> and you know why sometimes we're so frustrated in the stretching of God? Because God's plan has nothing to do with ours. <coughs> Half the time, the stuff God do actually, if you be honest, most days it irritates you. You might as well be honest. It, it, oh yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Because it keeps you from doing things that's going to gratify your flesh. Especially when you're really listening and being sensitive to His leading. You can't convince me. That sister that stepped on your foot ten times. And you know number 11 is coming. Mm -hmm. And you got your mouth fixed because you about to tell her off. You about to tell her some stuff. And the Lord tell you to shut up. That's right. That's right. Tell me that's comfortable to you. No. Or better yet, the person you know kicking dirt on your neck. You know they kick it. You the last person in church and they need a ride. And nobody in your car with you. Mm. God tell you to take them home. Mm. Mm. Tell me that's comfortable. It ain't. <laughs> you understand? Well now, 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 now watch this. You trying to figure out how's that best for me because God, you, know, you got a sixth sense of you, but this ain't funny. <laughs> what you say? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> because you know, it's, it's the same fun, but I'm being stretched. But the reason it's good for you is because it's teaching you how to love like he does. Because truthfully, how people treat you is how they treat him. But now we have to treat them the way he treats them, not how we want to treat them. That's why I said it's not always comfortable. It's needed, but it ain't comfortable. Right. 
Y'all with me? Yes. Okay. Attributes of the devil. Ooh, well, do we, do we really need to exhaust this list? Okay, we'll run through it. A liar, a murderer, a sword, a discord. Mm. Uh, yep. We're we, we going to do the sword and discord real quick. If can't nobody get along with you, <laughs> it ain't always everybody else. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Right. I mean, everywhere you go, it's always a problem. Mm -hmm. It ain't everybody else. Right. It's you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't get along with nobody. Something wrong with you. Amen. You the soul of this court. Tell your neighbor, say, stop acting like that. <laughs> 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 Quit having baby folks who you walk in the room. <laughs> and then you get all deep. Ooh, they just don't like my anointing. No, nah, baby, they ain't you an anointing. You got an issue with it. It's your attitude. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But again, we have to remember whose attributes are we displaying. Because whosever attributes you display, can, can I be honest with you? That's really who you serve. That's really your master. That's really your God. Let's go. Let's just go. Says he's cunning. Uh, you always slip. A uh, wicked. Malignant, wow. Cowardly, temper of thief without principle, proud, deceitful, fierce and cruel, aggressive, a destroyer. When you display these attributes, when you display these characteristics, every time you act in this manner, your behavior gives praise to the devil. That behavior gives praise to the devil. And so what happens if you keep praising him? What you think is going to happen to you? Well, I mean, they eventually, yeah. But if that is consistently your attribute, if that's consistently your way, eventually God's going to take his hands off you. Think he's going to back up. Scripture says that I'm not going to always strive for man. You know what that means? I'm not going to always fight. I'm not going to always be in contention. I'm not going to always be in competition with man. I ain't going to always be trying to get your attention. I ain't going to always be trying to get you to love me. I'm going to back up. And when he backs up from you, what do you think happens? Talk to him. And he has a field day. And then here's the reality. Most of the stuff ain't new to you because you're doing it anyway. Mm -hmm. But see, I don't say that. Say it. Half of y'all, maybe not y'all. Okay. Maybe not y'all. But most people in the body of Christ, I say it like that. Our devil agents. <laughs> You're operating as a devil agent. Because on Sunday, you sing in praise and worship. Mm -hmm. On Monday, you sing and drop it like it's hot. Okay. All right. <laughs> and then on Monday, you live the life to match drop it like it's hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We used to. And, and, so, and so you said we used to? We used to. We used to. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God, sister Sinclair, we got saved. But see, now watch this. Here's, here's the reality. It, 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 here's the reality. Here's the truth. A lot of people, really, Satan ain't fighting. Because he already got it. <laughs> You just fight, or they're just fighting with the ideal of being fake on Sunday morning. 
because I know what I'm supposed to do on Sunday. Right. So I got to put on this air because I'm about to go to church. Right. Some folks can get in their car, you know, they got to turn off their radio because, you know, they weren't listening to praises what I do on their way to church that morning. All right. Okay. Um, I, I used to uh, hang out with some of the young people from my church. I used to hang out with them. So I hang out with them. Every week we was going in the eat. He, he was doing something. Always hanging out. Always fellowship. Then they start going clubbing on Saturday night. And they start saying, hey man, you coming with us? No, nah, I can't go. Oh, we only gonna go for about an hour. We, we gonna fall through there, man. We, we gonna be out of there so we get home, get ready for church Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. No, can't go. Because why am I gonna set myself up for failure? Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna destroy my witness because not only are they going out, but then they wanna take pictures and plaster it all over social media. <laughs> <laughs> So now they want everybody to know Where you been? that they were down at the club with their drinks in their hand, big grins on their face, and then they want to post videos of being in church on Sunday morning <laughs> after they done got there late because they done overslept sitting in the choir stand with a hangover. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sitting in the choir stand with a hangover. Why? Because the attributes that they were beholden to had nothing to do with righteousness. But it was all those things that gratify the flesh. And as long as you gratify the flesh, Satan don't let you do what you want to do. And watch this. God loves you enough. Write this down. God loves you enough. That if you want to go to hell, he'll let you. Mm. Mm. Let that sink in. He loves you enough that if that's really what you want to do, he'll let you. He'll let you. Though that, that's not his will for your life. And see, we have to understand that there is a difference in God's will for our life and then God just allowing us to do stuff. Everything God allows you to do ain't his will. Some stuff to teach you a lesson and he done said no so many times and he done blocked it so many times but you keep going after it then, you know, what was left? I've got to let it happen. Yes. And then after it happens, what do we do? We want to come back running to God and ask him for God to forgive us and we're praying. And then he's telling you the whole time, well, I, I, I told you don't do it in the first place. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Every time you tried to go over that girl house, I was blocking. You had a flat tire. You didn't have no gas. <laughs> Every time you wanted to go see that boy, something came up. But because you just kept on trying. You just kept on trying. Next thing you know, you got a baby back, nigga, you can't stand. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's even worse. And then you sit there talking about some Lord, how I get into this. Because you kept trying. Yeah. Okay? We good? Yes, we are. Watch this. Uh, when it comes to devil's attributes, no, says, even though we know this when we see it happen, instead of being mad with him, we get mad at one another. And consequently, we're always giving him the victory that he wants. Still talking about the attributes of the devil. When we start operating in these areas, and we start seeing people operate in these areas, instead of being mad at the enemy, we get mad at each other. Yes. Yes. And every time you walk around mad at each other, keep his victory. 
Because bitter and sweet can't come out the same mouth, so you can't cuss me and bless God at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've got to choose one. And so if you walk around not talking to each other, then that means there's no praise being lifted from you. Your voice is silent. Your praise is closed. It's cut off. So if there's no praise being lifted in the earth, then that means God's spirit is not coming down to the earth to hover over. Why? Because he inhabits the praise of his people. And in him inhabiting the praise of his people, that means he comes and he sits in the midst. But if your mouth is closed, he ain't showing up. But then there's nowhere for him to sit. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Y'all with me? Yes. Okay, moving on. It says, as we compare the two lists of attributes, who do you suppose causes sickness and suffering in the human race? Hmm. Now, I got a note here that says, look at John 9, 1 through 12. Somebody turn over there. John 9, 1 through 12. Somebody got it? And Jesus passed by. He saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither has this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night comes when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he has thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Shalom which is being interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seen. Okay, stop. When you read the rest of it, it just talks about the rest of the process. But now, in the beginning of it, though, the disciples asked him what? Who sings? <coughs> Jesus said who? Nobody. Nobody. Why was it done? For the glory of God. Everything, write this down. This is important. Everything ain't the devil. Everything that happens to you, everything you go through, is not the devil. There are some things you experience because God has you in that place for glory to come out of it for him. Yeah. But here's the kicker. We never see it as God because we expect everything from God to be good. We expect everything from God to be comfortable. We expect everything from God to fit in a nice little box. And anything outside of our ideal of who he is, we do not. There are some things that are literally divine defects. And it's for God to get the glory from. Have you ever, have you ever seen some people in their sickness that... Uh, they're still excited, they're still upbeat. They ain't never down. And you start saying to yourself, man, if that was me, I don't know, I don't know how I'm gonna be able to deal with this, I'm gonna be able to have this. That's why you didn't have it. Because you couldn't have it. That's right. Because in that state, God knew He couldn't get praise out of you. So I can't put you through that. I can't put that on you. There are some things that are put on people because God can trust them with it. 
even though when we see it, we think it's unfair. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Have I lost you? No. Y'all still with me? Yeah. Y'all bored? No. All right. <laughs> it says, uh, understand that the devil is not a negative God, but a fallen angel. As a result of the fall, he did not become more powerful. Sin always weakens whatever it touches. Highlight that. Put some stars by it, whatever you need to do to remember this point. Sin always weakens whatever it touches. That's why it's vital that we become more in tune with the Spirit of God so we're not so easily distracted and duped. You know, it has always amazed me how uh, people get caught in sin and then they want to start talking about all oh, the mistakes they made. Well, you know what you was doing. He was talking to you the whole time. And you still sitting there, I know this is wrong. I ain't got no business over here. <laughs> Yes. Because <laughs> you're weak. Yes. Now watch this. Watch this. You started out strong. You, you, I mean, you started out good. But you know, she kept smiling at you. I talked to the fellas. This. She kept smiling at you. Every now and then she'd throw a little joke your way. See if you're going to laugh. You know, first you know. Married. I'm good. Then you and your wife have an argument. But y'all gonna get it straight. Okay. Y'all go to bed, man. Wake up, you still mad. You ain't talking to her, she ain't talking to you. Now you go to work. But she is smiling again. <laughs> Not even entertaining the conversation. Because you want somebody that's gonna make you feel good. Mm. Boost your ego a little bit. Next thing you know, you're weak. We haven't lunch together. You're weak. I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to that. Next thing you know, this is my work wife. That's right. Wait. Yeah. You buy her lunch. You buy her lunch. <laughs> she got issues going on. Now you try, you try to help her. Yeah. <laughs> the next thing you know, you over there. Mm -hmm. First time, oh, when you need to ride home, I got you, girl. I can drop it off because I'm always going to catch you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> about a car, you don't see the word C-A-R, you start picturing that car. That's right. So the more people talk to you, the more you keep hearing certain stuff, you start seeing that thing. And the more you start seeing that thing, you start saying stuff like, oh, I wonder what that would be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, you said it out loud. Yeah. Talk about some just you know. Oh, I can show him a thing or two. All I need is one night. One night for what? To mess up. <laughs> and then what happens, because now you've allowed the sin in, because you opened the door, because you kept playing with it. You kept playing with your kryptonite. So now you didn't open the door, and next thing you know, you're entrenched in a year-too-long love affair that you shouldn't have been in, and once it all comes out, you've lost everything. Yes. Yes. 
All because you wanted to gratify your flesh and not call yourself under subjection. You wouldn't check yourself. But now here's the kicker. If your girlfriend came to you and told you what she was doing, you check her quick. That's right. You tell the girl, don't do that. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And we're gifted at giving advice we are willing to ignore. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, we gifted in that. Amen. We gifted. I tell you, don't go over there, but as soon as your back is turned, here, I go creeping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's funny. Y'all look at that be funny. Y'all look at that be funny. That's right. So, so, so we have to be careful. We have to be careful. Uh, uh, it says, understand, I'll read that. Right uh, are, are we stronger or weaker after we've seen it? We understand that we're weaker. Okay? Jumping down says, uh, again, you have to be careful that you know this is the devil's playground. When you start operating in sin, uh, the more you operate in sin, the more power you're given to him. Okay, you can't beat him at his game. Right. Mm -hmm. Stop trying to think you got a handle on this thing. You ain't got no handle on. It. Mm. If you're trying to get over drinking. So I'm talking about some you going to the barber's witness. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't that. the first drink go past you, you good. Yeah. The second one go back, you straight. Yeah. By the time that third one go back, now wait a minute, you 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 start thinking because you start smelling and you start remembering how good it felt when you were in that place, although God has brought you from that place. You start remembering again how good it felt. So you start saying this so. One drink ain't gonna hurt. Come on. And that's how sin gets you. One time ain't gonna hurt. And that one time turns into a lifestyle. Know what you can handle. That's right. That's why it's important again that we go back to Ephesians where we're putting on the whole armor of God. You can't deal with the devil half dressed. You not know if he gonna whoop you every time. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. It says, jump down. Some of the works of the devil. Uh, okay, we gotta hurry up. Uh, some of the works of the devil are sin, sickness, fear, death, depression, murder, temptation, deception, lust, and rebellion. Okay. Uh, but I have highlighted here. It says now. Uh, in the name of Jesus, we have victory over the devil and his works because Jesus made them of no effect. But here's the note. It says, but we must be in Jesus. Again, we cannot fight him on his own turf. Hmm. Stop telling people you're going to lay your religion down. Just say it. And we're good to say that. Yes, we are. And if you can lay it down that easy, you really ain't got it. <laughs> if you can put off Christ that easy, you really ain't in him. If it's that easy for you to go back into your old ways, you really ain't where you think you are in God. So you need to back up and check yourself. You got to beef up your prayer life. Because honestly, uh, for as long as some folk have been saved, at this stage in your Christian walk, some stuff shouldn't even phase you, know. Right. People saying and doing certain stuff shouldn't even bother you, no know. more. You should be able to see it and know what it is, brush it off, and keep on moving. But because you're still frustrated, Every time it come up, you all bent out of shape. You go back to fussing and cussing over it. Every time it happens, that means you ain't got delivered from it yet. And so God still got some process to do with you. So you need to stop judging everybody else and deal with your own stuff. That's right. Amen. Yes. That's right. We have to get to the place where we stop trying to tell everybody else 
how to be holy and righteous when we live in as filthy rags ourselves. Right. But see, it's easy to focus on somebody else. That's right. Because as long as I'm looking at you and I got everybody looking at you, ain't nobody looking at my flaws. Yes. Yeah. And you're angry at yourself. Oh, I'm looking at it because I'm trying to make sure they don't come out. I'm trying to make sure I move the right way and say the right stuff. Yes, yes. So don't nobody see the real me. They don't nobody see my insecurity. They don't see that every time you say something to me, really I want to cry, but I got to put a smile on my face and bite my tongue to keep from losing it. Yes! You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. So if you're going to be in Christ, you got to be all the way in. Mm -hmm. That's right. You can't, you can't tiptoe with it. You can't play hot stuff with it. You got to be all the way in. Yes. Because that's really the only way that you're going to develop and be able to defeat the enemy when he comes. You got to be all the way in. Are you with me? Yes. All right. Uh, give me a couple more minutes and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna wrap this up. Uh, says uh, when you're going through stuff this is the note that I have when you're going through stuff God will allow you to be tested and tried everything again ain't the devil and it ain't always God most times it is us and we let our minds run away with no leech on it. Mm. Mm. It's your thinking that messes you up. Yeah. Yeah. You start thinking folks saying stuff about you and they ain't saying nothing about you. Yes. They ain't even thinking about you. But your own insecurities Unlocks the paranoia in your mind. Mm. And now your mind is running rapid, and you dealing with everybody based on what you think, not on what you know. So consequently, we don't deal with the facts of God. We deal with the ideas of our own imagination. And then we blame it on God. Or we blame it on the devil. And they need one of them nowhere around. So you never control your thoughts. My note goes on to say this is why the prayer ministry is so vital. Because it helps us tune our ear to his voice. So often there are things that are happening that we need to rebuke and repent from. But because we've turned the deaf ear, we can't do it. Am I making sense? Are you me? So you've got to deal with yourself. Get you under control first. And remember, I don't care how long you've been going to church, how many Sunday school classes you've been had, how many times you might have graduated from BTU, that, that, that's way back in the day. I don't know if anybody even do BTU no more. But, that is training. Yeah, yeah, that's got some right there. But, but, but the reality is, there is nothing you can do in this earth realm. Right. Try to fight the prince of the air in your own mind. You can't do it. So pick your religion back up. Get back in God. And begin to deal with the issues that are in hand. But until we realize it, we'll never be able to accomplish it. All right, we've got 10 minutes. I'm going to stop here. Open the floor for questions. Thank you.